there we go. What's the Miles from Black Feminine TV talking to the one and only Susan Kelechi Howard, Susan Kelechi Watson. <laughs> it's been a minute since I saw you last, but we're yeah, near the end. It's been a good run, but we still have more to go. Obviously, we have come some upcoming episodes, which involves Beth. So what's that feeling like? If I understand you are part of the writing crew on one of these episodes. I am. The next episode that is coming up on February 22nd is the episode that I co-wrote with Ebony Freeman. Uh, for the first time, I was in the writer's room of This Is Us. And it's really, it was a really dope experience. I, I think it's the highlight of my experience at This Is Us, not only because I got to write, but I also got to co-produce the episode. Uh-huh. And then talk to me about, you know, obviously the evolution of Beth and at what point throughout the seasons, did you know they were gonna give her more to do this, than just playing Randall's wife, that you would get more involved and we would get a backstory and so forth. When did that happen for you? I think it was around season two, when they started to say, oh, we're gonna to start to write a Beth backstory and we're gonna kind of tell her story. I feel like that's when, I, that's when Rachel came into the scene who plays uh, teenage Beth and, um, and that's when I, I, be, I believe Little Island Girl was season three, maybe season three or four. And so, yeah, that's that's when the rumbling started happening. Uh, I guess the rumbling started happening before then, but then they were like, it's definitely gonna happen like in, in season three. So um, yeah, when I first started the show, I didn't know much about her or where she would go. So the evolution has been, you know, a really cool thing to see and, and be a part of because uh, we all knew so little about her in the beginning, and now we know a whole lot about her. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you had to choose outside of the writers, would Beth be a dancer or would she be somebody else? No, I I, I do dancer. I mean, I used to be a dancer, and I I wasn't. Shall I look? I listen. <laughs> I I went to schools with people who are out there killing it, you know, even now. So I knew. I wasn't the best. I, I was good. I, I can say that I was not the best. And so I wanted to do something that I felt that I was better at. And I think that's how I fell more into the acting side of it. And I've always loved acting, but I love dance. Like it was like a second language for me. Um, but again, you know, I went to Howard and I saw people, I saw people dance. I was like, oh, they do it like that? Okay, no, let me go on over here and learn some Shakespeare. And so I switched up in that way, but the story that happened to Beth is so similar um, in terms of like, the, you know, there was a lot of body shaming in that culture and things that, um, especially as a black woman and the construction of my body just made me feel uncomfortable the way that people were making me feel. And so I stepped out of it because of that. But then when I went to, um, you know, an HBCU and saw women of all shapes and sizes like doing ballet and killing it and doing, all types now. It's like, well, why would they tell me I couldn't do it? So it it does resonate with me. It also resonates with Ebony, who I co-wrote with because she was a dancer as well and came up against those same, you know, boundaries and, and restrictions that people were trying to put on her. So I love that that's the story. I've never been a nine to five person. So working like a businesswoman type thing is is always sort of like acting for me. You know, it's like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll do that thing. But something about her being like this secret artist was like, I love that part of the story. In writing, uh, along with Ebony, you know, were there any, were there any jitters, you know, because you, as opposed to, you know, it's one thing, you got the acting down on point. So now it's writing and people see that credit, you know, which hopefully could lead to more work. You know, were there any jitters putting together, because writing for TV is different than writing for a play or for a movie. You know, obviously there's gotta be a lot of people coming in board and saying, yes, this works, this doesn't work. We don't have time for this. We can't add that in. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good question. It's, I didn't have the jitters, because I, listen, when you write on this show, you're part of a team, right? So they're not gonna let me come out here looking crazy. So I felt like I got some people who have my back if this is just really, you know, whack, you know, somebody's gonna help me. But I felt, I felt confident in knowing the actors and knowing the voices of the characters. So it felt like I was writing a song that I heard the melody to for like six years. It was like a matter of just kind of plugging in 
words and stuff. So it, it did play out in my head in a way that I could hear it and then just write what I was hearing um, because I know the character voices so well, which I didn't realize, you know, it's just in your head after six years. Um, they gave me a great outline to follow. I, it was, we had to put a lot of story into this particular episode. So it's not necessarily like sort of a specialized episode in terms of like we're focusing on one thing. So there was, you know, it was more building a story where we could give everybody the equal measure so that they, their story could be told and heard. And then it was like sort of wrapping up this Beth arc that we had been exploring for the past few years. So there was a lot that we had to get in there, but I, I feel like we got it all in and I wrote one half and then Ebony wrote the other half and then we came together and put those things together. And then we rewrote for the next few months with you know the writer's room with Dan and doing all types of page turns and things that I'd never heard of. And I thought I was just gonna write a little something and send it to them and it was gonna be on its way, but that's not what happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole process and um yeah but it was, it was like you know I, like I said I got to produce uh the episode as well which was amazing to be able to like choose the actors that were going to be co-starring with us and to go through all the props and all the locations and you know all the the little things that it takes to put an episode together I was able to learn and sit in on all that too so I thought it was just great you know the, the Pearsons are a loving black family on network television, mm -hmm. you know? And obviously we've seen this sense of maybe they're together at the end, we don't know. But for you, knowing that a lot of people see you as Beth, do you feel a sense of pressure that you can't do wrong in your real life? Because <laughs> you know, if there's something wrong, they're gonna be like, oh, Beth Pearson, ain't gonna say Susan Galecci. They're gonna be like, Beth Pearson, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know what, I, thank you now, I feel the pressure. Um, I haven't, I haven't felt that pressure. But, you know, I haven't even thought about it because to me, in my mind, I'm always playing a character. So like, I never think, oh, this is supposed to be me in some way, or people are thinking that this is me. And one of the great things that started to happen when I originally was playing the character, people would call me Beth on the street, but now people do call me by my name and, and so I don't, I, I know the connection is there. Like I know people, you know, sometimes if I, po if I po post a picture that feels like sexy or something, people are like, oh, Beth is trying to, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I know that that connection is like really there. But for me, if in my mind it isn't, then that's kind of just how I live. I'm like, yeah, that's, I guess if you want to say that's Beth in a bikini, I guess. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> in my mind, it's me, you know? How's this chemistry between you and Sterling? Obviously, you know, th th that presents on screen, off screen. You, you know, we see that that it's a great friendship that translates on screen and obviously it's coming to an end. You know, how's it been all these years, especially with the rest of the cast? Um, yeah, it's wow. It's it is that thing where it's, it's starting to hit me now. And, you know, I, I got to say this. I really don't know that I could have been more blessed than to have worked with Sterling. I, I don't know, you know, I, it truly feels like uh, a really sort of perfect moment, you know? And I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll always be so grateful for that, for the impact that we've had playing this couple is just something I can't even really put words to yet. I think that might be the thing that I'm, that sort of hasn't hit me the most you know, but the way that they have, Randall and Beth have moved people and the way that it has done something for the culture that I never knew that it was going to or didn't imagine it doing, um, to become a part of that, to become a part of like the pantheon of like our culture and what that is, uh, just means the world to me because I know that I was always looking for something like that growing up and watching TV and searching for our images wherever I could find them. Um, the fact that somebody doesn't have to search, you know, and we're a part of that means, um, doesn't have to search the way they used to, let me put it like that. And I'm a part of that, uh, makes me feel really good. And that Sterling, um, and it would, I don't know what that would have been without Sterling, who he's been, 
for me personally as a friend and just the outstanding actor he is. And I get to come to set and work opposite somebody who's not just a great actor, but just so generous of spirit and good, you know, just a good energy. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. That's my partner in crime. <laughs> you know, Susan, it's a pleasure speaking to you. It's a pleasure speak seeing you. You know, I don't know if you are aware, we share the same birthday. <laughs> Do we? Come on, Scorpion season. You know, small world, small, small world. world. I love it. Oh you man, know? well, I'll be wishing you happy birthday. <laughs> so, yeah, so come November, whether we're you are in LA or New York, maybe we'll give you some, a shout out. But either way, you know, whatever you do, I'm always there to support as I've always done. So keep doing your thing. We're here to watch you every Tuesday, wherever you ever may be at. Take care, stay safe. We'll yeah. talk down the road. And I appreciate you and all your support, Wilson. I really do. Thank you. All right, go have fun.